I'm Stephen Das, Chair of the Awards Committee. I'd like to call the March 17th, 2022 Awards Meeting to order. We have a physical forum represented by Stephen Datz, Ricky Erickson, and Hai Vu. We also have Joe Orfano and Laura Dutton joining us online. The Office of General Counsel is represented by Rebecca Levee. Budget is represented by Lori Whitmer. Before we begin reviewing today's agenda, I'll note that there isn't anyone physically present for public comment. Lynn, did you receive any public comment via email? No public comment. Let the record show we did not receive any public comment. I'll pause for a moment for callers joining us online to unmute and speak up. Okay, hearing no comments, we'll proceed with today's regular agenda. On today's agenda, we have items one and three through eight that have been reviewed by procurement and budget. These items are now ready to be reviewed by the awards committee. Note that the award item two has been deferred, beginning with item one, representing the minutes from the March 3rd, 2022 awards committee meeting. Are there any comments or corrections to be discussed? Okay, hearing none. Uh, I'd like to get an, a motion to approve award item one, representing the minutes for March 3rd, 2022 awards committee meeting. I move so moved. And a second. Second. We have a motion from Hai Vu, a second from Ricky Erickson. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Minutes are approved as presented. I'll pass it over to Heather Beer, Manager of Procurement Contracts, to walk us through each of the remaining award items before I ask for a motion, beginning with award item three. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I apologize, my neighbor's putting on a new roof, so it's a little loud, so hopefully it's not too disturbing. Um, just to confirm, Stephen, do I run through all the awards, then pass it to you, or do I pass each one back to you? Pass each one back to me. So present award item three, pass it back to me. I'll get the motions and pass it back to you. Got it. Okay. Okay. Award number three. This is a change order to the contract with Four Waters Engineering Inc. in the amount of $161,500.50. Um, this contract was originally approved by the awards committee on May 6, 2021. Um, this, uh, this award request for the change order is to revise the design contract for the Fairfax to Brentwood water main replacement project during 30% design review, during the 30% design review meeting for the project, JA O&M department noted a preference to install a new four inch distribution water line in parallel with the proposed 20 inch transmission water line along the route on West 21st street for the water services to minimize the number of connections and taps in the new 20 inch water main. The hourly rates used to develop the change order quote are the same as originally agreed upon. And the quote for the additional design was reviewed by JE project staff and be reasonable compared to past projects. And a copy of the fee table is attached for reference. <clears throat> are there any questions on this one? If not, I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, Heather. May I get a motion to approve award item three? Joe Orfano, so moved. And a second? Laura Dutton, second. Thank you. We have a motion from Joe Orfano, a second from Laura Dutton. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion is adopted. I'll pass it over to Heather to present award item four. Thank you. Award item four. This one's kind of a tongue twister, so bear with me. Um, this is a single source award to Oracle America Inc. in the amount of $681,372. This will be a one-year contract and the scope of work state, I'm oh, sorry, the, the project title is Oracle Migration of EBS mm -hmm. and ISG Application for Exa Platform to New Oracle IAAS OCI Cloud Solutions. The scope of work, um, State JA needs to migrate the e-business suite and the integrated SOA gateway application from Exa platform to Oracle Cloud infrastructure to infrastructure as a service to comply with regulatory compliance. JA's existing Exa data and Exa logic environment 
includes hardware and software for QA test production and disaster recovery environment. This infrastructure houses Oracle EBS. This purchase is for the new annual Oracle Infrastructure as a Service Cloud Solution annual subscription. Um, and the reason why we're going with Oracle, because Oracle was awarded um, the engineered hardware and software back in 2015 on a proprietary basis. Oracle Exadata and Exologic has since become a JA standard. And this request was approved at the JA ERP Steering Committee in January of 2022. Um, we're just doing a one year, um, it's a one year, pro it's a one year contract with two one year renewals. And the benefits of doing the one-year contract is um, that JA can ramp up to the cost associated in the bill of materials. For example, JA will on only be responsible for what is utilized as the implementation progressed and completed in the first 12 months. JA has no liability or required to spend the total of 681000 um, being awarded today. In allocated, in allocated universal credits over the 12-month period, so I guess we just use what we what we want. And after the initial 12-month period, Jay would potentially switch to an annual flex contract to lock in pricing for a longer period of time. Um, so the request today is to uh, approve the single source oracle. Any questions on this one? If not, I'll pass it back to the chair. Um, I know the business is on the call, but Katura is also on the call, so if you have any questions for the business. If not, I'll pass it to the chair. Thank you, Heather. May I get a motion to approve award item four? Hi, Lou. So moved. And a second? We have a motion from Hi, Boo, a second from Ricky Erickson. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed, motion is adopted. I'll pass it over to Heather to present award item five. Okay, award not, number five. This is a renewal to a contract with Sage Oil Inc. for the on-road residential electrification program and strategy project in the amount of $455,175. Um, See, this uh, contract was competitively bid as an informal in the amount of $298,429 in May of 2021. And then we subsequently did a change order of about $23,000, which was approved by the awards committee on 8-12-21. Um, the request is for additional funds for the one-year renewal um, going from May 1st, 2022 to, to April 30th, 2023 to extend the existing contract to maintain Jay's residential electric vehicle program for three additional and three additional services. Um, so in addition to the services that we're already getting, we're also adding the dealer inventory search tool. And this is an enhanced, it is an enhancement for the drive electric website that will enable customers to act, actively search dealer inventory within hundred miles of Jacksonville in real time. We're also adding EV monitoring fees and additional incentive for level two chargers. Um, so this, this will provide a new incentive for customers to cover up to 15% of the cost to upgrade their electrical system to enable the installation of level two chargers in their home. Any questions on this one? This is high. I have a really a question procurement wise, and I know the decision's already made, but really wanted to understand if the original intent was to award a contract and have is it two one year renewals so the potential value in the contract would have been more than three hundred thousand dollars why didn't we why didn't we go out as a formal award at the very beginning uh, because is it because the one year re the renewals are not guaranteed um yeah the renewals are not guaranteed um, maybe they just started the program and re those are optional renewals. So I, I guess the, the program was successful. So we exercised the renewals. And Nick, I know you're on the phone. I don't know if you can jump in. Yeah, th yeah, this is Nick. I think the answer and Tony, uh, remind me if I'm, if I'm correct, but I believe our intention was we wanted to basically, 
uh, introduce the program, see how, how effective it was. And then from there, we could determine, you know, to have more flexibility for the renewals and for adjustments. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's exactly right, Nick. And uh, so far, we're, we're seeing what we would expect from a program like this, which is uh, really to educate the customer base on electric vehicles. We have touched almost 9% of our residential customer base with the program, which is pretty good considering it's uh, focused only on electric vehicles uh, as a subject matter. So uh, we feel that we're, we're showing some good success and uh, these additional features that we're adding, we believe will enhance the program and, and improve adoption of EVs. So uh, for this renewal, we'll be evaluating those additions as well. All right, thank you. Yeah, I have no issues with the renewal itself. Just a question about the if originally we had should have, should have gone out as a formal or informal bid, but I, I think you answered my questions. Thank you. Uh, just one other quick question: the begin date uh, it's showing 2022. Should that be 2021? I think that that date is there for the renewal date, not the original contract date. Um, if you look above um, the date of original award, it'll say it says 5-1-2021. So I think the begin date, well, I think the intent was the begin date is of this renewal that we're speaking of. Yeah, this so is just a, it's a consistency. Uh, question just to make sure that, that we're following the same process. So if you would take that as an action item just to verify before we send out the final package. Will do. Okay. I'll pass it back to you then and I'll make a note to update this. Thank you, Heather. May I get a motion to approve award item five? I believe some Joe Arf and a second. Uh, Joe Arfano, second. Thank you. We have a motion from Hi Boo, a second from Joe Arfano. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion is adopted. I'll pass it over to Heather to present award item six. Okay, award night, item six. This is a single source award to Trojan Technologies Group ULC Corporation for the Nassau Water Reclamation Facility additional Trojan UV system in the amount of $448,650. Um, the Nassau Water, Water Reclamation Facility is being expanded to 3 million gallons per day and requires an additional UV disinfection system for this expansion. This facility currently has a Trojan UV system. In order to maintain compatibility, an additional Trojan UV system will be installed. The Trojan UV system is a current JA standard. And let's see, that's all I have to say about that one. Any questions on this one? This is hi. I have several questions for first for procurement, because it was explained to me, but I still don't fully understand. This is a partial ratification um, for essentially 10% of the contract price. I understand that JA has not paid that um, amount, but we are doing a ratification because of the commitment to do it. So could someone explain to me why in this case we're ratifying even though JA has not paid any, um, any money? And I know that in the past previous award, if we had paid, even though we committed, uh, it wasn't a ratification. So what is the difference here? Now, I'll just add my presumption based on reading the contract was that there was work uh, performed by the vendor and they were due this money. So if you could add that to the clarification, I'd appreciate it. Okay. So is Joe or David, are you on or Samuel with is it partially being ratified because work was, I guess, work was already performed? Good morning, Mrs. David. Yes, you're, you're correct. I can't speak high to the previous case, but in this case, you're correct. We made the commitment for the shop drawings to be performed, even though they haven't invoices for it yet. But 
Yeah, I understand that for this, but I know in previous awards, some of the comments were, well, since JEA has not paid the invoice, um, has not paid any money, all that the work has been completed, we're not ratifying. I know that we have that in previous cases, previous awards. So trying to understand what's the difference between this and other David, board items. So it's really for David for could have been a sorry, sorry hi. David sorry, could no. it be a, 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 a partial because we issued a purchase order already for it. Yes, ma'am, we did, and they they completed have started and or completed the shop drawings for this. So I don't know if they planned us to invoice this at one time or they were just holding off on invoicing that portion. And I don't know so what happened on the previous con, uh, case high, if that was just before a change or we just you know, an interpretation. I guess it was more of an intent yeah. to pay. The timing apparently didn't work out. So I have a follow up question now to the project team. Because the PO and the work does not follow the quote by the contractor. In, in the quote, you see there's a payment of 15% upon submittal approval and I think 80% and then, or in, you know, more percentage. Talk. So there's nothing in the quote to say that we have to pay them for shop drawings or anything before submittal approval. Why are we issuing invoice uh, POs differently than what the quote on the uh, is saying? I think if you go and uh, let's see, page. Page 76 of the award package. And I had to ask this question before, but it wasn't answered, so I'd really like to know why. Is that Samuel or? Um... Uh, hi, this is Peter. Um, so, my understanding is just what was explained. So, um, you know, we wouldn't, we're, we're going to pay against this order as work progresses. And so if there's a, if there's a difference in the amount that I'm not aware of that. So, no. um, Did, um, okay. Let's, let's, I'm, I'm not questioning the, the, the contract and the award to the company. Okay. Um, trying to make sure we are consistent with what we've agreed on, uh, with the contractor, right? So, um, if you, I guess if you scroll down, because I have a different version of the, uh, uh, page five or five, yeah, you scroll down just a little bit on this document, right there. Right the payment terms and invoicing milestones. Okay. Those are the quotes. That's what we should abide by. Oh, I see what you're saying. And you, we created a 10% uh, PO for 10%. Gotcha. For shop drawings, which it does make sense, but either the contractor or the vendor should submit the quote as such or I would agree follow what I would they've agree. approved. Yes, sir. So it should be 15% is what they should be consistent no. with. No, it should have been 15% after submittal approval, which is not the case here. It should, it, if you want, to, I don't want to jump on the soapbox. If you want to follow to do what you're doing, it's 10% for shop drawings, X percent for upon shop drawing submittal, and then X percent upon equipment delivery. Right? Yes. So there should have been another payment milestone or payment upon approval of the 15% is what you're saying. 
the so subject table does back until the, the submittal submittals have been approved. That's right. So therefore, it should have been a ratification, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I, I guess my message is we got to we are enforcing consistency, um, requiring consistency amongst our vendors and contractors and vendors. Yet we're not doing the same internally. And we really have to be mindful of that. So well, you're I recommending mean, that we amend the award to uh, take the ratification out and adhere to the terms and conditions as, as outlined? I, I, I think it makes sense the way they do it because the vendor needs to have some money up front in order to produce shop drawings. So it should really match, change the terms to match what we're doing now, which is 10% for shop drawing creation, X percent of whatever it is upon shop drawing submittal so that they can start the manufacturing process, X percent upon receiving, receiving uh, equipment and X percent upon startup. So uh, I'm recommending that, that we approve the award as is, but look at the rap, uh, approving the ratification because the work has been done or, and then we've committed to that, but get with a vendor to change the payment terms and invoice and milestones. Makes sense. Okay, and hi, when I go to do the contract, we can, I can, we can modify the payment terms accordingly. Mm -hmm. I'll make a note to do that. Okay. If no more questions, then I'll pass it back to the chair for a vote. Thank you, Heather. Good conversation. Uh, may I get a motion to approve award item six? I move. And uh, second? Who's so moved? <laughs> Forgot what I was supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion from High Boo, a second from Ricky Erickson. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion is adopted. I'll pass it over to Heather to present award item seven. Okay, award item seven is a contract amendment to Garney Companies Inc. in the amount of 102. $102,771,513. This is, this change order is to complete, is for the GMP to complete this project. Um, this project was originally bid and approved by the awards committee in December of 2019 for pre-construction services. Um, there were sub subsequent contract increases that were approved by the awards committee. Um, for interim GMPs, for the purchase of the UV system and major process equipment. Um, the previous awards are attached for the work committee review. Um, and so the negotiations with, with Garney were successful to complete the final construction of the Southwest Water Reclamation Expansion. So the total price of this contract, inclusive of all costs, is approximately 0.06% above JA's 100% design estimate and deemed reasonable. I didn't state this is for the, the construction manager at risk services for the South, Southwest Water Reclamation Facility Expansion Project. Any questions on this one? If not, I'll pass Heather. it back to the chair. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, there's Joe Orfano. Um, in looking at, and probably higher Sean can address this, in looking at this total of 114, uh, how, how does this relate to the estimated total project cost? Uh, is that figure still valid? It's, I guess question for higher Sean. Joe, yes, and Sean can confirm that this is what we've been working towards in the current OPB, the budget for the project um, is, is updated, and it's, it had been uh, pretty consistent with this number. 
because we were we were working so this, so. Hi, does this represent the total project cost no there's um call it gea costs uh, included so this one includes um no this one does not include engineering or gea cost okay the so the, the total project budget is going to be uh, more so than I, um, I think i saw time. somewhere 148 is that figure still accurate ballpark sean will have to confirm or I'll have to look it up real quick it's 128 million Oh, 128. I thought I saw 148 somewhere, but okay. Thank you, Laura. Yes. Right. And and Joe, just to, to confirm, this will be the total not to exceed amount for Garney's portion of the work. So, so okay. the actual construction through, you know, final construction uh, is listed in this, this award here. So if anything, theoretically, um, It'll go down based on actual okay. cost. Sorry, Lori confirmed the 128 figure. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'll pass it back to the chair. More questions? Thank you, Heather. May I get a motion to approve award item seven? Uh, so moved. And a second. Joe, on a second. All right, we have a motion from Hi Vu, second from Joe Orfano. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion is adopted. I'll pass it over to Heather to present award item eight. Okay, award night item eight, last and final. This is a an award of a contract to PTI Transformer LP for the 230 kV to 34.5 kV transformer for steel ball substation in the amount of $2,094,243.06. This was advertised as an RFP. Three companies attended the op optional pre response meeting in November. JA received three proposals, and PTI was deemed the lowest price. Um, let's see. Okay, the bidder submitted their unit price, actual equipment price, and are evaluated on an evaluated price, which takes into account load losses to determine the awardee. The load losses are determined by the equipment designer and input into a cost of ownership calculation to arrive at the evaluated price. It should be noted that the award amount is higher than the base unit price due to the inclusion of a dynamic clamping soft cost training and technical support and a 3% fixed price increase. Price is fixed through delivery. Um, the award amount is the budget estimate as this project was developed to support a key customer, a JEA key customer that will reimburse JEA for the costs incurred by JEA for the overall, overall project. JEA has not purchased the size of transformer in 15 plus years. However, considering the size and rating compared to other similarly sized transformer pricing is deemed reasonable given the current market conditions. For reference, the 2021 PPI, which is a cost increase and in um, price adjustment um, table for large specialty transformers was up approximately 30% in 2021. Any questions on this one? This is hi. I have a question because I didn't really quite understand that it is it the award amount is the budget estimate as this project was developed to support GA key customers. So what what does that mean? Is it the the budget number was created to reflect the actual amount that we're awarding, or was there a budget number and then we're just awarding to that number? Um, good question. Rodney, are you on the line? Can you jump in? Yes, this is, um, Rodney Lovgren. So, so when they, um, were researching what the options were, they, they didn't have the numbers for this particular transformer and they didn't have the project written. I guess the project request wasn't written and, uh, the business units online here as well, they could probably jump in. But once 
once we went through and got the price for the transformer, well, we negotiated the uh, escalation and the other soft costs. We took those numbers and the key customer group went back to the customer and, and gained their approval to proceed with the project. And at that point, the uh, the PM went and input the project request to get the funding. That's that's my understanding of the order of operations that occurred for okay. this. And so the budget was there at the same time once we got the approval to proceed. Thank you, Lamia. That, that explains it. I appreciate it. Could, could I ask? Could I ask a quick question? Sure. Yes, go ahead. So, so, so who, who's the customer? Commercial Metals. EMD. That's who I thought. Thanks very much. That's all I needed to know. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right. We'll pass it back to the chair. No other questions. Thank you, Heather. May I get a motion to approve award item eight? Great. And a second? I second. We have a motion from Ricky Erickson, a second from Haibu. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion is adopted. The entire agenda representing items one and three through eight are approved for March 17, 2022. Is there any other business to come before the awards committee at this time? All right, seeing none, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs>